Go to Michael Buffer for the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the greatest venue in the world for sports and entertainment, the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the unified middleweight championship of the world. And it's all brought to you by K2 Promotions and Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Taken Boxing Promotions and Eye of the Tiger Management. Live on HBO Pay-Per-View, this bout is sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, BI Group, and Cessna Bank. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman Thomas Hoover. Executive Director, David Berlin. WBA President, Hilberto Mendoza. IBF President, Daryl F. Peoples. IBO President, Ed Levine. And WBC President, Mauricio Suleiman. In attendance at ringside, the three judges scoring this bout. Glenn Feldman, Julie Letterman, and Steve Weisfeld. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Steve Willis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the officials are ready, the fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. Madison Square Garden, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, with head trainer Abel Sanchez, standing five feet, ten and a half, official weight, 159, one half pound. This Olympic medalist now has a perfect professional record consisting of 33 fights, 33 victories, including 30 wins by knockout, with 17 KOs in three rounds or less, and he has won 20 consecutive fights by knockout. He's recognized with having the greatest KO percentage in middleweight championship history from Karaganda, Kazakhstan, and California, USA. The reigning, defending, undefeated interim WBC, IBO, WBA, middleweight champion of the world, Gennady Triple J. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, with his head trainer, Mark Ramsey. He stands five feet nine, and officially weighs in at 159 and three quarter pounds. Wearing purple, his outstanding professional record, 34 victories, including 31 knockouts, with 27 KOs in three rounds or less. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada, presenting the reigning, defending, IBF, middleweight champion of the world, Mesdames et Messieurs, David Good evening, gentlemen. You both see the instructions. I want you to obey the commands, protect yourselves at all times. Right now, everything below the letters here is going to be low. Everything below the letters here is going to be low. Tap it up. Here we go. In an already amazing day in sports that's seen huge college football upsets and National League playoff baseball action, this is the most electrifying event of all. Sold out Madison Square Garden. Triple G's debut on pay-per-view, middleweight title on the line, two monster punchers, it just doesn't get any better.
And this crowd is excited. They're cheering everything. 20,548, the official attendance in the garden tonight. And here we go. Any one punch could end this fight at any moment. Both are lights out punchers. Golovkin landing a jab early on. Doing a good job of using that jab to get distance, to make the stronger puncher deal with that jab first to get beyond it. And it's a big difference in the two fighters because Lemieux isn't much of a jabber. He works mostly with his power shots. And Golovkin does have a jab, one of the best in the sport. First time we ever seen him come out and use it this much, but it's a perfect opportunity for him to because he's a boxer puncher fighting against a strictly puncher. Well, Lemieux has a puncher's chance. That's his best chance. And we've seen Golovkin hit. He's there to be hit at times. He's not taking any chances to get hit so far in this first round. He's using his jab to keep David Lemieux at bay, and so far Lemieux hasn't tried anything to get him past the jab and into Golovkin's wheelhouse. Lemieux reaching with a body shot, reaching with another body shot, and not getting there. Golovkin has established space with that jab, and he's not letting Lemieux in. Jab, jab, jab. It's like an experienced fighter against a guy who can fight, but not really the best at boxing. Use that jab, make him negate that first. Hockey box numbers show that over the course of his career, Golovkin is one of the three most prolific jabbers in the sport. Along with Vladimir Klitschko and one other fighter, he lands his jab at a constant rate. Golovkin has one punch knockout power, but he's methodical in the application of his power and frequently boxes carefully in the early rounds, especially here against Lemieux's power. Careful first round for Golovkin, but an effective first round so far as he's landing his jab and Lemieux hasn't landed much of anything. Jab, jab, Golovkin sticking it into Lemieux's face and keeping him back. Jab, right hand. Lemieux missing again. It's all Golovkin early. Well, he's trying to take Lemieux out of the fight early by backing him up with that jab, making him fight uncharacteristically of himself. He's used to being the attacker, the stalker. Right now, Triple G is trying to stalk him to make him feel uh, less dominant in the ring. Tremendous concentration by Golovkin, and you see the amazing number already from Copy Box. He's landed more than 20 jabs in the round. Lemieux may already feel that he has to load up on the home run left hook. He's done it once. Right hand of the body by Golovkin. Ago. Hasn't really tried to get close. Good Lemieux Lemieux. finally lands a body shot. Another body shot for Lemieux. But all in all, a Gennady Golovkin round dominated by his jab. Slide over, okay? You saw that right hand, right? That's what's getting battered right there, okay? Make sure we have position. Very good jab, but I want you to slide over with the jabs, okay? Very good work. Very good work. You okay? You look wonderful. Deep breath. First way for him to really punch him very hard on the right, okay? Go hard with the jabs. Okay, Fein attack up. Try to go even stronger. Okay, go on the defensive. Go on the defensive. Lemieux's French Canadian trainer, Mark Ramsey, has been his trainer ever since the first loss of his career against Marco Antonio Rubio. That was when he broke his relationship with Russ Anber and brought in Ramsey. And the general consensus is he's been a better fighter since then. Golovkin lands a right hand. Golovkin lands another right hand. Lemieux trying to be more aggressive in this round. Lands a jab and gets inside for the first time. You got to be careful because uh, Triple G is throwing some big shots between his punches, and those are the ones that do the most damage. Hooking off the jab. Lands that. Jabs again. Lands that. Landed 26 jabs in round one, which is simply colossal. So far, the difference in the fight is Golovkin's boxing skill. Of course, we knew that. Though. Yep, he's outclassing him with his skill, and Lemieux has to figure out a way to land his power by hook or by crook. 
preferably by hook. The first oh. body shot from Triple G will be interesting, too. Look at the jab and the accuracy with which Golovkin is landing it. Right hand. Lemieux trying various ways of trying to get past the jab. Hasn't managed to do it with any consistency so, so, so far. You wonder how long Lemieux's confidence is going to hold up under this constant jab assault. Yeah, that jab is killing his confidence by the second. He's, yeah. not, he's not missing. It's not a normal jab Golovkin throws. It's a jab that lands like some right hands. Kind of like Kovalev's jab. It snaps Lemieux's head back and disorients him. Little left hook lands for Golovkin. Jab lands. Right hand was blocked, but knocked Lemieux back a little bit anyway. Jab lands again. Jab lands again. Golovkin almost caught him with a left hook there. And there's a hard shot from Lemieux. Right hand to the body. But biggest punch he's landed so far. Golovkin, it seems to me, was able to roll it with his shoulder and make it glance off. Yeah, really smart, showing some very good defensive tactics here, uh, Golovkin is. Better than we've ever seen this early on a fight before, I believe. Now the question is, will a frustrated Lemieux begin lunging? In which case, Golovkin might have a chance to catch him with a power shot coming in. Body shot by Golovkin. Right hand lands. Right hand lands again. Knocks Lemieux into the ropes. Left hook for Golovkin. Right hand lands again. Phenomenal accuracy. Unbelievable accuracy early on for the Cossack star. Lemieux has never had to fight at this pace before in his life, I guarantee you. Hard right hand by Golovkin. Well, if the first round was good, this one was even better for Gennady Golovkin. Listen, David, don't let him give you jobs, okay? Total have, you're not having a good distance. You're not having a good distance with you. You need to, you need to block him or go defensive on him, okay? I want to see off the jab. I want to see a little hook off the jab. Then make him think outside, inside, okay? Deep breath. <laughs> Over the years, watching CompuBox numbers, surely you've gotten a sense of what constitutes a truly great round. In round two, Gennady Golovkin landed 43 out of 77 punches, 56%. Complete dominance of David Lemieux so far in the fight. But that doesn't mean Lemieux's out of it, because he can knock Golovkin for a loop with any one shot if he gets into position and lands. Lemieux is trying to box responsibly against Golovkin, but hard to imagine him winning a boxing match. He said that he's not going to load up against Golovkin, and then laughed and said, or, or maybe I will, I have to see when I get in there. And pretty soon it may be a good idea to load up against Golovkin to at least give yourself a chance to land something big. This is true, but also, Max, it's live by the gun, die by the gun. The best time for him to catch you is when you try to load up. How many jabs can you eat? before you begin to make bad decisions. Matthew Macklin was quite articulate on the subject of how difficult it is to think in the ring against Golovkin with the pressure he puts on. Body shot by Golovkin, right on the solar plexus. Wonderful left to the body. Lemieux handling this very well so far, but he's getting hammered, particularly by the jab. You gotta give Lemieux a lot of credit too, though, Jim. Like you say, he didn't have to take this fight for his first title defense. There's Lemieux trying to do it the right way, coming in behind the jab and throwing the right hand. Well, for the moment, give Lemieux all the credit in the world because no other high-quality middleweight wanted to do this. That's my push. So I think it should be mentioned that he's in a fight that he didn't have to get into, one that he knows he was gonna be the underdog coming into, but he's here trying to give it all he has, and he really wants to try to win it. And he's earned a lot of respect from boxing fans for stepping up and doing what he's doing here. 
Golovkin with good defense. Lemieux hasn't been able to pierce it so far. And that jab just keeps coming. Flowing like water. Body shot. Jab again. Jab again. Hooking off the jab. Tremendous left hand work by Gennady Golovkin. When Lemieux is at his best, he fights in a more intrepid style than this. And Golovkin has already taken that away from him. With that jab. A very calm David Lemieux agreed with us in the meeting yesterday. Yes, I see every reason to believe that Gennady's a better boxer than me. And yes, his amateur career is much deeper and prolific than mine. It's my job to make sure that none of that matters. So far, it matters. Lemieux is starting to get a little more active. Throwing more power punches in this round than has Golovkin. Where he realizes he's going to get hit anyway, so he's saying almost, I may as well get me a punch or two in while I'm getting hit. And again, Golovkin snaps Lemieux's head back with the jab. Left hook. They traded left hooks. Both landed. This is the round where we start. I want to see you touching him here, okay? I don't want this in my head, okay? Just keep touching him here. Keep him, keep him alert, all right? And then we land the one we want. Here you see Gennady Golovkin constantly working off of that jab, attack with the right hand, then it's just a jab. Jab to the face. Jab to the face. Jab keeping him at bay. Doing a wonderful job using that long jab to keep Lemieux out of punching hard so that Lemieux can't land a big punch on him and he can attack Lemieux first because he's first getting range with that jab. Good, good round though. Very good. Don't worry about the crowd. You do what you gotta do. Three rounds so far. It hasn't been a slugfest. It's been a boxing match. And that's been tremendously to the advantage of the better boxer, Gennady Golovkin, who has clearly won the first three rounds from David Lemieux. And you saw the calm in the corner as Abel Sanchez said, keep doing what you're doing, and then we'll pick out the moment at which you're going to land the big shot. Harold, how do you have it through three? Look at you. I got it exactly the way you said. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Gennady Golovkin. Jim, I, I'm going to say something that you may say is totally stupid. You know what's bothering me about this fight? What's bothering me about this fight is I don't think David Levine's got a game plan. Watch your I, I mean, Watch you your gotta head. have some game plan to fight Gennady Golovkin. Either you go to circle, or you're gonna move in and get your shots off, or whatever. You gotta have a game plan. He's walking in and he's getting blasted by the left jab, and the left jab is setting up solid right hands, and Golovkin's murdering him. I, I mean, if I were fighting uh, Golovkin, I definitely would have a game plan. Three to nothing, Golovkin. I think Lemieux has come into all the fights he's had so far, including his losses where he ran out of gas, able to impose what he does on his opponent. And he's not able to do that here because Golovkin is a different class of fighter as he's showing so far. Maybe Lemieux had a plan coming in, and maybe that plan was disrupted by the fact that it, Golovkin in the first three rounds has thrown jabs at five times the middleweight division average five times the average of what middleweight fighters throw with the jab. And that definitely is a game changer that would change anybody's game plan and make them think totally different of what they thought coming into the fight. And the old adage is everyone has a plan until they get hit. And talk about getting hit. There was the left hook and Lemieux is hurt. And here goes Golovkin. Looking to finish already in round number four. Hammers Lemieux with another left hook. Straight right hand up the middle. Left hook again. And here we go. And the Canadian star is hanging in. Hasn't been to the canvas yet, but Golovkin is landing big. Legs are getting weak, Jim. an enormous underdog and so far the, the fight's gone according to Hoyle. Yeah, he's an even bigger underdog now <laughs> based on what we're seeing here. Now, everybody knows that Lemieux has the power to turn it around at any one moment, but Golovkin is so thoroughly tactically in control that it prompts Harold Letterman to say, for instance, I don't even think Lemieux has a plan. Cut. 
What a round. Better and better for Golovkin. Okay, total breath, total breath here. Okay, breath twice. Do it, do it, Good. The ball. Okay, total breath. Total breath. That's the last. David, that's the last. I want to do the ball, I'm so. You need to be finishing your combinations. When you go on the right, try to pursue with that, okay? He sees his skills of Triple G. He throws a beautiful left hook while blocking a beautiful left hook at the same time. Lemieux threw his without defense, but Triple G threw his with absolute marvelous defense at the same exact time. I'm sitting here giggling because you just don't see it. You know, I mean, that's just... You don't see it. That's colossal. Round five. Gennady Golovkin has thoroughly dominated the first four rounds. There's a mouse under the right no eye of David Lemieux. Okay. No doubt the product of a Golovkin left hook. Lemieux does not seem capable of setting traps to get his punches home. He's going to have to throw caution to the wind at some point. Maybe too late by the time he does that, Max. Golovkin with responsible defense, good balance, a jab which is working perfectly, landed some power shots in the last round that ruffled Lemieux. It's taking on the aspect of a potential gradual beatdown. But of course, again, Lemieux could turn it around because of his enormous power. Hard right hand for Golovkin. Get hooked to the back of the head by Lemieux too. And by the way, we haven't even mentioned referee Steve Willis. Haven't said his name yet. Which is a credit to both fighters because there have been no clinches, no holding, nothing unusual. They're just firing away. Oh, good uppercut. Jab uppercut combination. Hard right hand by Lemieux. Best punch of the fight so far. Landed on Golovkin's cheek. Gives Lemieux a little confidence. Tries to come in again, and Gennady rips him with a left hook. Vicious body shot with the right hand. Hard left upstairs. Left jab. Golovkin punishing Lemieux for hitting him with a right cross. <laughs> with that jab, big time. Golovkin's able to take those shots well because he keeps his chin tucked. So most of the shots that he's hit with, if he's hit cleanly, are higher on the head, on the cheekbone, and not on the chin, which is, of course, the knockdown button. Also able to take punches well because he's never out of balance. That's exactly right, Jim. His feet are always spread, always set to accept or give punches. Abel Sanchez has taught Golovkin as a mnemonic to constantly keep his shoulders balanced and says if you remember to keep your shoulders on a flat plane, then your body will never tip over too much to one side or another, and your feet will always be solid underneath Oh, you. that body shot hurt, Joe. Oh. Down goes Lemieux, and Golovkin hit him once while he was down. Six, seven, eight. You all right? Baby, you all right? You, are you okay? Yeah. You're sure? First knockdown okay. of the fight, Sorry, and man. Lemieux is lucky that there are only a few seconds left in the round. Was only the second time in Lemieux's entire career that he's been knocked down. First one was by Marco Antonio Rubio. And Gennady Golovkin punished David Lemieux for landing one power shot. Okay, total breath, Dave. Okay, breathe. Okay. Breathe, Dave. I want you to do better than that, okay? Did you see what happened? Okay? Don't be defensive. Don't be defensive. He see Triple G just like uh, Chocolatito, head, head, then followed by a beautiful body shot, left body shot to the liver, and you saw him go down, but this was a bad punch. I would have gotten disqualified for that punch. That's right. You sure. already did get disqualified for that punch. I definitely got disqualified. Might have got, got banned from boxing for that. 
But for Golovkin, there's no penalty because he's too beloved, right? Yeah, he's Triple G, he got Apple commercials, so he's good. And he hit Lemieux after the bell. And I don't think either one was dirty. I think they were both kind of instinctual following up on his advantages, but it tells you Golovkin's mentality here. He knows this is the fight that is the door to superstardom, and he wants to take advantage of every little opportunity. And he's fighting with supreme concentration, absolute devotion to the task, no and problem. has been tremendous so far. Now, how discouraged is Lemieux after the knockdown? Only the second time in his career he's tasted the canvas. There's another hard right hand by Golovkin. Lemieux backs into the ropes. Jab, jab, right cross. Keeping that pressure on him, Jim. Hard left oh, hand by Lemieux. Landed his money punch right on Golovkin's chin. And that momentarily shook up Gennady Golovkin. And it gave him a little confidence. And that may have taken it right back. Now Lemieux starting to throw caution to the wind increasingly when he realizes it's his only chance. And as Roy said earlier, it may be too late. Lemieux lands another left hook. As he becomes more aggressive, he gets a chance to land a couple of power shots. But of course, he's coming into harm's way and giving Golovkin the chance to land power shots also. There's the left hook to the body again. Didn't catch him quite the way he did the first time. The Mew showing some heart though, Jim. Most guys don't bounce back off of a good body shot like that and fight this strongly after afterwards. Many would feign a knockout after being hit when they were already down in order to try to win by disqualification. Like Montel. Somewhere Montel is watching and saying, no, 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 I didn't do that. <laughs> we good now. You got him back. Yeah, we got right him back. Hand by Lemieux. That's why I said we good now. I thought. We've seen this from Golovkin before. Oh. He, he seems, his concentration seems to wane um, after he's taken control of a fight. Well, that was a good body shot by, by uh, Lemieux just then, though. Might have been low, but it was a good idea. Yeah, it was a wonderful idea. And generally, Golovkin becomes more hittable after scoring a knockdown when he's following up on his advantage and feels more secure. He could win the fight solely with his jab. Yes, he could. He could dominate 12 rounds and win a unanimous decision with his jab. But he wants to knock Lemieux out. Just who he is. Another big left hook lands for Lemieux. Golovkin showing you he's got that chin. He's promised a big drama show. That doesn't happen by itself. Uppercut for Lemieux. Golovkin catches him coming in with a left. Catches him coming in with a left again. Oh, good up. And a right hand uppercut to punctuate the round. Come hard on Lemieux. Louis C.K. at ringside. And Louis C.K. surely would tell you this fight is no joke. Golovkin through six rounds has already landed 209 punches. An astonishing number. <laughs> Exactly tripling David Lemieux. Right okay. You see the up, you see the opportunity. Try to punch him. Try to punch even more, David. Okay, breathe. Try to try to be more aggressive here. Try to punch him more jabs. Here you go. Round seven begins. We're halfway through the fight. Harold, how do you have it so far? Hey, okay, Jim. I got it 60 to 53. Six rounds to nothing, Gennady Golovkin. Hey, Jim, do, do you, does anybody here get the impression that David Levine should have cut his hair before this fight? It, it seems that his hair's going into his eyes. I mean, you know, it's, it's hurting his vision. In any case, be as it may, Gennady Golovkin keeps working that left jab. Uh, beautiful left jab, right hand combinations. He gets an extra point for the knockdown in round number five. He's thoroughly ahead this fight, six to nothing, Golovkin. Harold, you see the uh, the hairstyle. You see that Lemieux is regarded as model handsome. That hair is important to him. That haircut is important to him. 
I, not, I agree not if with, it's costing him the fight. I agree with Harold. The hair is getting in his eyes at times. Uh, I don't know if it would have made a difference so far. His face is starting to be busted up. Big time. Well, Golovkin's landed 209 punches by copy box count in the first half hey, Tom, of the Tom, fight. Tom. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. If the middleweight landed 209 punches in 12 rounds, that'd be regarded as pretty good. I just want to look at you, man. I just want to look at you. Look at his nose. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Just make sure. Come on, Dick. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. 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 Good. Okay. 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 Blood coming from Lemieux's nose. Possibly it's broken. Lemieux's a guy who believes in his power. He's not looking for a way out here. Not at all. Good hook by Triple G. Right hand over the top by Triple G. Lemieux had a lot on the missed left hook. That jab is killing Lemieux's nose. And ruining his concentration. As I said early in the fight, how many jabs can he eat? and continue to remember the task and what he's supposed to do. Good body, good body shot. shot by good. Lemieux with a right hand. A oh, good hook by Lemieux. Yeah, that was a 2-3, a right hand followed by a left hook and then another one. <laughs> Hard right hand by Golovkin. Lemieux is hurt against the ropes. Turn Lemieux sideways. Gennady's got him cornered. Another light, right hand lands. Not hard. The Mew is making us a fight, I'll tell you that, Jim. He's not laying down for nobody. He's taking a terrible beating. Yeah, the referee wants to stop it. Steve Willis watching very closely. But out of respect for both fighters, it's hard to imagine there'll be a premature stoppage. I think Lemieux will be given every chance to stay in the fight. You have to get in the fight first. He's in the fight, uh, Max. He's landing punches at will now. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of can he land a real sharp one or a good one to change anything around. He's in the fight. But he can't get away from the jab. Ish. He's in the fight. Ish. Okay. We are in the fight. What are you talking about? We're still in the fight. Hey, yeah. Yeah. You want to let the guy frapper at the end? You understand? When you're in have your blocking position, okay? Once he sends you twice, try to be back. Okay? Right away. Okay? Try to be more responsive. Every time he punches, you try to punch back as fast as you can. Okay, try to be a little bit closer, David. There was a brace of doctors leaning into David Lemieux's corner between rounds, watching him, trying to figure out whether there's a reason to stop the fight, but no, no. No stoppage so far as we go into round eight with Golovkin on Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard, having won every round so far. He's about 40 landed punches away from landing more punches than he's ever landed in any of his 33 previous prize fights. So he is making a target of David Lemieux. Hat still goes off to David Lemieux, though, because a lot of us never expected Lemieux to last this long with such a big puncher as Triple G, and he's been doing a great job of surviving, not only surviving, but having chances with those big punches that he's throwing. Right, I don't know that he's in the fight, but he remains apparently dangerous and is able to here and there to land something on Gennady. Well, he's been shown a form of respect in that Golovkin is relying on the jab more than any other punch and more than ever before. He's already broken his own record for landed jabs in a fight. He's boxing much of the time instead of slugging away. All of that is a form of respect for right. David Lemieux's punching power. If, if Gennady sets his own personal record for punches landed against the fighter, in a sense, that fighter's the toughest guy he's fought. Exactly. Good right hand. Hard left hook. 
Hammered Lemieux. Good right hand by Lemieux, but the uppercut by Golovkin drives him back into the ropes. The body shot hurt him again. Steve Willis is going to stop the fight. Technical knockout for Golovkin in the eighth. It was a one-sided, lopsided, um, mismatched beatdown, and Lemieux earned this date tonight. He beat some good fighters to get here. A tremendous performance by Gennady Golovkin. Yes, it was. Is there a middleweight out there capable of putting him into the kind of drama show we really want to see? where his heart and metal and chin are truly tested. <laughs> we hope there are five middleweights sitting at home right now saying, ah, he's nothing, I can get him. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely that's not the case. Fighters are smart. They know what they're watching. Yeah, they're not saying he's nothing. They may say they can get him, but they're not saying it's because he's nothing. Hey, what heart and what guts David Lemieux showed, all right? Man, what heart and what guts could go in my backyard any day. You understand me? That is a real game guy, a guy that's really willing and ready to go. There are the jabs, caught a hook and still throw a beautiful overhand right, much like we saw him do in the, in the fight with Gill. Take a big punch and land a bigger punch. There's a body shot coming in here somewhere. Triple G's on the attack right here. He throws that jab, beautiful overhand right. Another jab, right hand, left jab, another right hand. We never talked about the footwork, Roy, the closing down the ring, but that's another big part of this. And that was the body shot, and there you saw him look. Yeah, and, the body shot really And that's why the referee stopped the fight. Yeah. He should have taken a knee there if he wanted to continue, but his pride probably wouldn't let him go down. He cuts off the ring so brilliantly that he mentally and physically suffocates the opponent and makes it impossible for them to think. He's always on balance. He's always in position to throw the punch he wants to throw. He can take what you throw at him. Always ready for battle, always ready to receive whatever comes his way. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Madison Square Garden, referee Steve Willis has to step in and call a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 32 seconds of round number eight. The winner by TKO victory. The knockout streak continues now up to 21 consecutive KOs. His record, 34 and 0, 31 knockouts. And he is now the unified IBF. IBO, WBA, Interim WBC, Middleweight, Champion of the World, Dame Gaspada, Gennady, Gennadyovich, Triple G.